Unfortunately, he wasn't in the best care um, or just simply could be metabolic bone disease. Hey guys, if you're new here, I'm Kyle. And I'm Ryan. And today we're gonna check out Crush the Aldabra Tortoise. And we're gonna give you kind of some background on him and how he got his name. Yeah. Let's see if we can first get him out of here. Come on, bud. Come. So what do you give him right there? This is Palmetto Gardens Collard Greens. <laughs> Come on, bud. All right, fine. The whole thing. The whole thing. So I got Crush right here with me. Now he's enjoying some of the shade from this tree. Now, it, even though it's the, the middle of winter here in Florida, it's actually quite hot, especially in the sun. Now a little bit about his enclosure. So he's got the tree here for shade. Um, you see him right there. And then there's actually a, a little hill here. Now it is pretty important with Galapagos as well as Aldabra tortoises to give um, the terrain in the enclosure some height. That way they can kind of climb over it and then that helps build um, their muscular strength, keeps them healthy, um, especially with a tortoise like this that didn't have the best setup growing up. And now Kyle, yeah. where did you get crushed from? Well, like you said, with the, with the, um, with the strength, you know, that's the biggest thing with him. He actually came from a good friend of mine in Michigan and the individual really cared about the animal. And I don't know what the cause is, whether it be metabolic bone disease, proper diet or lack of proper diet or lack of UV, uh, just UVB. Uh, but this animal developed a very soft shell, a very deformed shell. And that's why his name is crushed because instead of it looking like a normal dome, like an Aldabra tortoise, it has a very sea turtle like appearance where it's very, um, it, very uh, vertical here and then it slopes off quickly in the back. So you know, again, with, with a Aldabra, it's usually high in the middle um, and it slopes on both sides where this it shoots up quick and then papers back very much like a sea turtle. So that's where he got the name Crush. Um, but also with this terrain, with the pond that he has, um, I made it so he kind of forces him to develop the strength again because when he first came here, he could not use his back legs at all. They had zero, zero mobility. Um, so what he was doing is he was essentially shuffling uh, with his front legs. Now it's amazing because it's actually gotten to the point where not only does he use his back legs, but I've seen him up against these, this wood posts over here. Uh, and lift himself completely up with his back legs. So he's probably a 300 pound tortoise. So he has gained so much strength. And again, I'm not saying I did anything right. I'm not saying the gentleman that owned him before did anything wrong. All I know is whatever he's doing down here, it seems to be working. Um, and this is a rather small enclosure just because his lack of mobility, when I, especially when I first got him, uh, I think this is 15 foot wide by 35 foot long. Now he will be getting moved into the new greenhouse, the tortoise greenhouse, which is three times this size, as well as having an outdoor enclosure outside the greenhouse. So he'll have much, much more room and we'll, we'll continue with the essentially therapy, the physical therapy and having mounds there, having water that he kind of has to push himself out of because again, he's it's been such a, traumatic, a dramatic difference between what he was like before and what he is now. Um, but you can see his, his shell is definitely deformed. It's definitely wonky, but man, he's, he seems to be living a life down here and he's been a lot more active. Um, again, I don't know if that's just from the sun alone or just him getting that much more strength back, but he is an awesome, awesome tortoise. Um, you know, I wouldn't trade him for anything. He's, you know, so many people are all about Oh, I'd love to have a flawless tortoise or no multi-scoots or whatnot, but man, it's all about the personality to me. And he is such a personality. Um, it's such a, a story and, and it's it's so amazing. It's so rewarding to see him um, come back from what he was. And again, I'm not saying I did anything right. I'm not I'm not a miracle worker. I'm not saying I, I fixed him. Um, all I know is he came down here and he is doing a lot better. So it's, again, it's just so exciting to see. Yeah, and then one thing that we hope that this channel gets across to a lot of a lot of you and a lot of the viewers out there that are learning from this is if you're going to get an animal like an Aldabra tortoise, even a sulcata, you're going to want to make sure that you know exactly how to take care of them so that they don't end up like like how Crush has been or even that you don't get an animal like this and you don't have the space for it. Because even though we're in this 
rather large enclosure for most tortoises. This is, like you said, pretty small and oh, it's, yeah. it's due to the mobility, so he's gaining it back up. But if he was fully functional, as you said at the greenhouse, that's probably as small as you want to go for an enclosure um, for that's, one of these animals. That's the reason why I did purposely make it small is because I wanted to, to monitor him very well. I wanted to make sure that on the cold nights we can easily get him in the house. Um, but he's just doing so absolutely well and you can see the vast majority of this enclosure was covered in grass that he couldn't touch. Now he's all over the place. You can see how it's all sandy here. So that means he is definitely packing it down, pushing it around. So he's he's doing what a normal tortoise does, you know, just re, re, uh, re landscapes the terrain. And then definitely, definitely like we've been harping on, do your research, make sure you can take care of them before you get them. Because uh, otherwise they'll, luckily Crush was able to end up in a place at Kyle's house <laughs> where someone could really take care of them. But unfortunately, in a lot of cases, especially Sulcatas, they don't, they don't end up in the best home. So if you're gonna get any animal, do your research, make sure you can care for it. Um, and yeah, make sure that you don't get a giant tortoise thinking that it's gonna be small and this would not be in a very good apartment pet. Um. Yeah, and like I've always pushed, I mean, I love the redfoot tortoises down here. They do so well, tropical species, but also for uh, the typical homeowner, wanting a tortoise indoors, sometimes outdoors, redfoot tortoises, even Russian tortoises, just a smaller species. They have such a personality. They're so amazing. They're so colorful. Um, there's no really reason to have a big tortoise like this. Honestly, it's a pain. Like I said, 300 pound tortoise trying to get him on a cold night. It's a lot easier having a red foot tortoise that you can just pick up and put in the house. And so, how often are you feeding him? And, this guy? Yeah. Um, again, he gets a, he still eats a lot of greens here, or a lot of grass, but I try to feed him every other day. Yeah, it's, it's probably not a little bit of food either. It's a lot, huh? Oh my God, yeah, it is. I mean, he, he eats almost a case of uh, collard greens or lettuce or in you know, all sorts of spring mix. So he's he's eats a ton, especially at this size. And this is still a small male. You know, they still will get a couple hundred pounds more. If, I mean, a couple hundred pounds, they get a lot more. So this is still a smaller tortoise as far as the Naldabra is concerned. Yeah, he's pretty awesome though. And he do does have a very unique story. He does. Again, it's just, it's so rewarding just to see him doing so well down here. Um, and he actually went to my good friend's house before he ended up here. And he was saying when he was even there, he wasn't, he didn't have any mobility at all, even in the front lights. So he was in South Carolina, had him outside. He was getting better uh, with the front legs, came down here. And now he has pretty much full mobility at this point. But again, you can see his, his shell is definitely deformed. You can see it's really sunken in here. It's not that smooth, you know, full look. Yeah, and it's really choppy too. It is, it is. So you just got to really watch with fungus here yeah. because it is open. Now he is a quite a stubborn animal. And the funny thing is, is with his heated uh, tortoise house, he could easily be going in there and staying warm. But I swear he avoids that thing like the plague on cold nights. But on the warm nights, you find him in there. Whereas on the warm nights, he can stay wherever he wants. Oh, let's see. Now let's see if we can and as you can imagine, moving this tortoise on a cold night to get in the house probably isn't that easy, huh? No, it's not at all. It's a two-man job for sure. Come on, buddy. Take a bite. Let's see if we can get him to show off his mobility. He sees one little piece and he's like, oh, I'll take that. All right, let's step back and watch the slow motion show. Riveting. <laughs>
All right guys, well just because I said he's mobile doesn't mean he's anything fast. So we finally got him to his feeding spot, so we'll leave him be. All right guys, well if you liked today's episode, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.